all right what is going on everyone welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new live stream uh for those who are just now joining we are uh replaying the political process and we're going to be continuing on uh, with our game as President Sean Irwin. In the previous uh, live stream, we basically uh, got elected to the presidency of the United States in the year 2028. We faced off against Mateus Cab Cabrera, I believe that's how you say his name, uh, and we won the presidential race after we won the states of Ohio, Wisconsin, Colorado, and Arizona. Uh, those were ended up being some of the closest states, but also ended up being the states to actually throw me over the top. Hopefully, whenever we run in a re-election in 2032, uh, we do actually expand our majority. Uh, so one of the things that we are going to continue on with is that we're going to continue... Uh, providing policy we're going to implement our policy and make sure that we are keeping most of the promises that we actually are uh, faced with so one of the things about uh, in 2032 is whether we are going to get primaried or not because if I get primaried um, I end up what I end up noticing is whenever I get primaried uh, essentially I uh, end up losing a little bit more so it's going to be more of a challenge if I don't get all of this done uh, so one of the things that we're going to go after is I think tax reform I thought we did that in our previous one but we can propose a brand new tax bill if we need to um, let me go ahead and send out uh, the notification that I am actually live streaming All right, there we go. Should everyone should be arriving now? So hopefully we see everyone here. Let's go over to tax policy and then let's go to tax bill. Uh, so one of the things, let me go ahead and pause this right here before I look at chat. Uh, so essentially, let's do this at ten oh five. Yeah, let's do 1005, then 16, we'll do 16, and then we're going to reduce this just a tad bit, and then fourth, we're going to do that at 30. Let's do 30 and a half, and then the highest one, we're going to lower you just a tad bit. Oh, fifth apparently needs to be 36%. I can't do that. Oh, yikes. Let me go ahead and increase. Let's see what happens if I increase that to 41%, and then you to 43 percent probably kind of just probably actually um wipes out some of the gains that i just kind of or some of the losses that i that i had whenever i was reducing these taxes uh, we got a corporate tax and let me go ahead and reduce you to 21 percent exactly and we have a federal sales tax ap apparently we go ahead and increase you. Let's do three and a half. And then in response, we'll also, we're gonna go ahead and raise the earned income tax credit per child to $3,000. You can't get primaried as a president. Uh, I think you can. You you still can get primaried whenever you're, whenever you're president. I've seen it happen. I mean, well, I mean, uh, okay. I mean, I this is like the first time I've ever actually been president on this game. I've I've always been the one to kind of run for lower level positions, but I've never been the one to run for like president. I, I've always run for senate. I've always run for a house and all that but 
president is just something that I've always kind of just, I guess, stayed away from. Um, so it's more of just kind of like a first learn experience, I guess. Uh, increases rate from 3% to 3.2%. What does this do to the budget? An increase of approximately $763 million. It passed the House unanimously, passed the Senate almost unanimously, only supposedly one Democrat voted against it. Uh, wow, this... If I, if I oppose it, see if I veto it, they kind of skewered it whenever they whenever it went through the houses of of Congress, and now it's just completely just dead on arrival, I guess. Um, let me go ahead and veto it, but the two thirds majority vote does override my veto, so it has become law. So that's the thing that sucks. Um, I hate. It's kind of also why I hate tax reform. Um, tax reform usually. Um, Tax reform always just kind of screws me up. Um, you should have ran in a Minnesota series. I think I did. Uh, no, I did. I... Okay, no, I did run in uh, the Minnesota series. I remember that. I ran... No, I only ran for governor. What did I do in the Minnesota series? I can't remember that. Alright, we are in... I think this is... Are we in... Uh, let me look. City... Are there elections going on right now for the local councils? No, there's not. I think this guy is like my protege, and he's been there for at least almost a decade. <laughs> um, hopefully he retires soon. How old is he? He is 66. Wow. Um, I, think, I think he is. I think he is. Where? Protege? Where's the protégés? There you are. Protege... Yeah, mayor of Wichita Falls. He's been in office since 2024, and then he's in office office until 2032. He's his he actually ex, uh, expires at the end of my term. Interestingly enough, well, actually, 2031 is going to be the election year. Okay, so 2030 is going to come up, and then 2031, and then 2032. So local elections again. Local elections are always going to be about the year before. Uh, the presidential election, which is kind of a good time frame. Um, so it's good that it's kind of like that. It's kind of like you have local elect, you have the uh, midterms, and then you have local elections, and then you have presidential elections, and then a year after the presidential election, nothing happens. So it's kind of like a break from just all the campaigning and all the all the crap that just happens between those campaigns. Lots of money being raised between now and the next one. Uh, vote on legislation. It is defense appropriations. $628 billion for our defense department. Go ahead and, and support that. So all I, this is my job is to sign all these bills into law. I can't really amend them or anything because I'm not in Congress. Uh, so it is just my job to sign these budget bills into law as Congress passes them. Energy appropriations, $31 billion. All of this is getting unanimous support, so that's great. Uh, financial services, support. Homeland security, $71 billion. Uh, interior environmental appropriations, and related agencies appropriations, $50.5 billion for uh, the Department of the Interior, Forest Service, National Service, and the Smithsonian. Great. Uh, lo labor, health, and human services. $2.2 trillion being given into the health department, so that's great. Legislative branch appropriations, $4 billion. Veterans Affairs, $193. State and foreign operations appropriations, $42.9 billion. It's by Herb Blumstein from Texas. Uh, provides funding for programs under the jurisdiction of the State Department. So that's interesting but different. It's HR 21. $142 billion for transpa transportation, housing, and urban development. All right, that's great. And let's continue. Let's go ahead and see what I can do to try to help some of these metrics, except I'm a Republican, so I kind of don't really have the option to 
do a lot of these because all of these seem to be progressive bills unless I'm going in and uh, you know changing the drug crimes or the public order crimes property violent crimes stuff like that um, city police departments can we try to shoot for that again since I am a Republican that's something that I could actually probably do I uh, think we still have yeah we should still have Congress on our side so I think we're gonna be able to get that passed uh, your experience and reputation have influenced the vote of 22 politicians has changed the vote of 21 politicians. That's oh, Wow, that's the most I've ever seen. Uh, your legislation, HR 22, is made out of committee with a vote of 27 to 12. And then... Uh, so it influenced the House. Passes the House with 305 votes to 130. So even if I, even if I veto it, then it's actually going to pass. Can you please make a new Power and Revolution Angola episode? Yes, I will. Um, think I could actually shoot for today if I could if I could uh, continue the Angola series. But then, if I don't do it today, then I will definitely do it tomorrow. So expect it today or tomorrow. Uh, really, just depends on what I am doing. So um, do apologize for I, I, I apologize for the lack of consistency within my posting. Um, I know you. I know it may be frustrating. Um, I'm really just, again, trying to figure some things out, and uh, I'll definitely be back on regular, regularly scheduled programming, I guess, if you say that. Um, might buy Lawgivers when it comes out, or maybe Democracy 4. I would recommend Democracy 4. Uh, Lawgivers is okay. Um, I need to play it again. I apologize for nothing. Same. Um, <laughs> uh, I, would, I would recommend Democracy. I actually haven't played Democracy 4. Um, but I like Logvigivers because it's I'm in the Parliament si simulation. Um, I'm gonna have to try Log Logvigivers Log again. I remember he said he named it something else, but then changed it to something different because Logvigivers <laughs> I think was uh, apparently already named after something, so he immediately had to change it as soon as he released the game. I remember that. Uh, legislation has been approved by the House of Representatives, 305 to 130. It has been assigned to the Senate Judiciary Committee, and then has been granted a hearing. And then it influenced the votes of 11 politicians and changed the vote of 11 politicians, and then passes the committee 12 to 8. Goes over to the Senate, and it is passing the Senate. It has, I have influenced the vote of 54 politicians and changed the vote of 53 politicians, and it passes. I actually had some Democratic support on uh, that bill so it passes the senate of the united states 63 to 37 and it lands on my desk finally we can put some more uh, police into the streets uh, establishes the program this is the first time i've actually been able to get this passed uh, it provides grants to improve city to police departments and let's look at the attorney general's testimony uh, this legislation authorizes the federal government to provide funding to police stations so that they can hire additional police officers as a discretionary program. Uh, funding levels are determined during the budget process, but the average funding level is approximately $11.5 billion, or 0.3% of the total federal budget. Uh, this will provide police forces with an, with an additional nearly 200,000 police officers nationwide. So that's great news for us and great news for our uh, local police departments. You should play Hearts of Iron 4. I suck at that game. Lawgivers 2 is going to come out soon. They have a page on Steam now. Oh, I didn't know they were making a second one. Okay, I'll definitely look into it if they're making a second one. Uh, I didn't notice you were saying 2 whenever you were saying Lawgivers. So I, I just looked at Lawgivers and I was just like, I remember that. Um, but, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into Lawgivers 2. I'll see, uh, I'll see how that looks. Poverty. Let's go to... Minimum wage. Um, federally, can we keep it at ten dollars? I would go for twelve because I know Republicans would actually like that. Uh, public housing, nine point six. Jesus Christ! This well, that's for the federal government. There's a lot of state programs out there. Uh, democracy four looks great, but it doesn't have parliament yet. Uh, I highly doubt they would put parliament in democracy. Like. They've gone through three other iterations for that. Can you please make an economic tutorial for Power and Revolution? Yes, that is still in production. Um, I, I, I've basically been in the script making process of the of the economic tutorial. Uh, the economic tutorial. Uh, let's look. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and commit 
to the economic tutorial as of now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and shoot for about the end of the month. I'm going to try to get that economic tutorial out by the end of the month. Um, it really depends. I'm still, I think we're just about ready to start production on it. Um, because there's a lot of work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's taken so long for the economic tutorial to come out. Um, but the there's a lot of work that it's going to be going into the economic tutorial because the economic tutorials have been my most viewed videos. Uh, so the plan is Gabe Vogel. If you guys are familiar with Gabe Vogel from uh, from Power and Revolution, you he has a channel over 400 subscribers. Uh, he is joining me, and he's going to be helping me uh, narrate the entire thing. It's going to be narrated, uh, dual narrated by both me and Gabe Vogel. Uh, both of us have been a part of the community for so long, and I automatically, just as soon as I was making the next economic tutorial, my immediate first thought was like, I gotta get Gabe into this. So Gabe Vogel will be joining me with the economic tutorial to present it, to teach you guys how to play the game and how to run your economy like a pro. Uh, so definitely wait for that economic tutorial to come out. It's going to be very fun to make. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh... I think I'm going to be getting with Gabe today, try to see what we can do to finish up. Um, there's a lot more, uh, it really just depends also where we are in the script making process because there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of stuff to really go over, talk about, um, etc. So, um, again, wait for that. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and start making some, maybe a couple of trailers for that too. Um, just to kind of build up a little bit of, um, and once the economic tutorial comes out, I definitely do want to resume, uh, making regular, uh, Power and Revolution contents, because I know you guys love that content. About 60, 60% 60 of y'all, uh, said that y'all liked, uh, Power and Revolution over the political process, so, um, if you enjoy the political process, you should play as Democrat out of Atlanta's. Okay, that's a... Pretty good one. ZK Gaming, thank you so much for that support. I really do appreciate it. Yes, we finally make Angola a great democracy now. Yeah, I know. I'm going to continue Angola because I want to see how far um, I can actually get them into becoming a democracy before my party either throws me out or I get assassinated. So um, that's going to be fun. Universal Preschool, federally. That'd be... If I actually... Okay, hang on. Let me see if I can actually do this. Let me see. I know that I know it's a Democratic bill, uh, but even Republicans uh, are in support of it. And plus, this isn't going to be the most. I think there's a lot of different state programs out there that are already providing universal preschool to their own uh, to their own citizens. So essentially what's going to be happening is whenever uh, I start the federal program, then it goes over to the states. Uh, essentially the 60 billion dollars is going to be significantly less because I'm splitting the cost with the state government so and then not only am I splitting it with the state government I'm also splitting it with the city government so uh, or the counties I guess uh, so these counties and then the states are all providing their own programs and then the federal government steps in and says hey we can go ahead and provide you with this amount of funding and etc so uh let's see if i can get this passed as a uh, with as a republican president with a republican congress uh yep see apparently republicans really like uh universal preschools so it, it passes the committee hr 23 passes the committee 38 to 0 complete unanimous support look at that it passes the house of representatives with 434 people uh, supporting it gets the entire republican congress to support it on my side along with the rest of the democratic coalition and then gets sent over to the senate it gets passed to, through the uh senate committee what it was the which one was it, it was a senate health education labor and pensions committee and passes that 22 to 0 it goes through the senate 100 to 0 and i influence the vote of 54 politicians and change the votes of 50 politicians so let's look at this uh speaker of the house does oppose it and then the pre senate majority leader 
does actually oppose it too it passes unanimously but then you get these messages telling you not to support it so uh see the Re democrats support it but the republicans really don't like it but let's go ahead and support it anyway um i'm gonna go ahead and go i think that's gonna be the last thing for this fiscal year that i'm gonna pass uh there's pardon the thanksgiving turkey hell yeah uh, you take a place on the White House lawn. The air is crisp in the uh, late autumn morning. Uh, the sunlight filters through the tree limbs that have shed nearly all their leaves. A crowd of photographers and guests stand across from you in front of you, standing on a table, is a confused and disgruntled looking turkey named Harrison. Once all of the photographers have gotten into position, you announce that you hereby pardon Harrison the turkey, who will live out the remainder of his natural life in peace and happiness. Uh, the crowd cheers and applauds. Harrison turns towards you, for, and for a moment you think you think you see the gratitude in his eyes. You smile and return to the White House. The event is ended. For one thing, why is the President of the United States staring a turkey in the eyes? Like, that's kind of weird. Crowd cheers and applauds. Harrison turns to... That's weird! That's, like, that, that means you have, like, a cryptic moment with a freaking turkey. Like, look at that. You just, it, it, like, it turns toward you, and then you look straight into the turkey's eyes. That's just, that's just wrong. Uh, I think they voted yes because of your influence. Yeah, it's probably, again, because of my influence. Um, let's look. See, Democrats hate me, but Republicans absolutely love me with 77% approval. And I also have complete control over the Congress. So they were, they're just like, we'll do whatever the heck you want, I guess. Um, Joe Biden won the USA presidency, as he should, as uh, he also won Georgia. Yep, he's the first Democrat in about 28 years. And that's, that's right, 28. Uh, the last Democratic president to win the state of Georgia was actually Bill Clinton in 1996. And the one before that uh, was Jimmy Carter in 1976. So it was 20 years before Bill Clinton, whenever Jimmy Carter won his home state of uh, Georgia, and then in 1996, whenever uh, assisted, it was actually mainly because Ross Perot, if you guys are at all familiar with the 1992 and the 1996 elections, there was a third party candidate that kept on running and essentially stole so many votes from the Republican Party um, and I think that's the reason why they call them spoiler candidates is because in the 90s, there was just one dude that just kept running in these presidential elections and would get so many, so many votes that it was bleeding off from the Republican Party. Um, and again, his name was Ross Perot. We got, okay, so in the year 2030, we have state house governor elections, and then we have U.S. House and U.S. Senate elections. So we are going to be campaigning this year, uh, and getting more Republicans to stay in the House of Representatives and the Senate, at least. At least we're, we're really eyeing on keeping the House. I don't think we have an issue with the Senate, depending on what's on the ballot this year. He won the same amount as Bill Clinton, I think. Uh, what's your prediction on the Georgia runoff since both Repu since both elections will get a lot of funding from out of state? I think the Democrats are going to pour a lot of money into those uh, races, but the Republican, well, let's look. Let me look at the results for those for those Senate elections because I think if the Republican was in the lead, then it's most likely going to be Republican. So in this special election in 2020, uh, okay, so Warnock won, not really won, but he he came up first with 1.6 million votes, and then Kelly Loeffler came up second with 1.2 million votes, and then Doug Collins, who is a Republican, uh, came up with 978,000 votes. So um in the georgia special election i think kelly loeffler does have a decent shot especially since doug collins is not going to be uh so let me look at this actually so full georgia results da, 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 da. so in the senate so between john ossoff and david perdue uh i think david perdue is going to win that election he's the incumbent and then also there was a lot of votes that kind of bled off for the libertarian candidate that 
essentially made it to the runoff so that's that's one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't really expect that first one to go into a runoff is because uh i mean john ossoff is a good candidate he ran in the previous senate election and it it's going to be close but i do think david purdue will keep his seat in the in the uh, georgia senate uh but for the for the uh, uh special election that one was essentially pretty split because uh warnock bled off or not really bled off warnock was basically campaigning really hard to a point to where a lot of people kind of hey, okay let me get my thoughts together real quick um i never really paid attention a lot to the georgia georgia uh, senate election so i kind of rusty on it um but looking at it from what i'm looking at uh i think warnock is going to be a pretty good candidate. I think he's going to get a lot of votes in the next election, and the next elections are supposed to be in January. Uh, but I think that Loeffler, again, she's actually the incumbent. I think Loeffler still stands a chance. So I think that I think Republicans are basically going to keep these two seats in Georgia because unless they have this the exact same turnout from the previous election, which they might, um, then I don't think that Republicans really are going to have any issues they're going to have issues with that because it's going to be close but i don't think that democrats are going to be able to hold off maybe they can chew off one seat but that still means the republicans are going to hold control of the senate because democrats basically need both of these elections to go their way in order to have control of the senate if republicans just win one of these they keep control of the senate so uh, i think i think republicans do have a very clear shot at keeping the senate it just it's a matter of whether both of these seats can actually slip to the democratic party in order to in order to uh you know keep it uh in order to get the senate to uh, go in their direction. I'm so sorry that I cannot talk right now. All right, let me let me go through. So we got a lot of national laws. Essentially, it was just tax reform, Medicare, Medicare payroll tax went up, and the eligibility. Oh, these were all the laws that I actually passed in my first term. So uh, these were the ones that I passed before I saved it in the previous one. All right, we got a meeting with all of my cabinet secretaries. So let's go ahead and look with the with the Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, the current national debt is twenty six point two trillion dollars, which is seventy three thousand dollars per citizen. We paid five hundred fifty one billion dollars in interest. To on interest payments for the debt. It did not reduce the debt and provided no public benefit to our constituents. The federal budget deficit is $218 billion. To reduce the federal budget deficit, I would recommend that you reduce expenditure. The people do not oh, the people do not want higher taxes and we not and we have to do something to eliminate the federal deficit. So I think in this next federal budget I'm going to shoot to do that. What if it's a 50-50? It's a uh, if it's a runoff election, it's essentially whoever gets the most votes. Uh, whenever it's in a regular election, that's whenever the law basically says that the, anyone has to get at least 50% of the vote because it's a winner-take-all system, first-past-the-post. Uh, but if it's a runoff election, then it doesn't matter. It's basically whoever gets the most votes is the winner of the election because they're going to be the ones who, uh, who are getting the votes they're the only ones that are going to be on the ballot and at that point not real no one else can really put themselves on the ballot uh because we've already had that election we've already had the we already we've already had the chance to say we already want these people because doug collins got what nine hundred thousand votes and that's the other thing about the the uh the special election um there's enough republican votes out there to to essentially uh, give Republicans the win in that in that presidential race unless the nearly 1 million people that voted for Doug Collins uh, just go to Warnock or if if it happens the other way because Kelly Loeffler in in that one I mean she got 1.27 million votes she got 25.9 percent of the vote and Doug Collins got 19.9 percent of the vote that's 
solidly i mean that's over 60 percent of the vote if if doug collins didn't even participate in this election so i mean and then there's a lot more other candidates it's basically it was a, it was essentially a gigantic jungle primary because there's just a lot of people that were on the ballot that got a lot of different votes i mean all of these people got at least three four five digit amounts of votes so um i think republicans have a pretty good chance like i think 60 40 of winning the special election and then in the uh the actual election not the special election but the first election uh again i still think that unless that independent vote does not come out and um more people it really just depends on what the on what the money kind of looks like by then uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and continue this instead of me just trying to figure out how to talk. <laughs> All right. Uh, meeting with the Attorney General, President Irwin, the federal prison system currently houses 460,000 people at a cost of $15.2 billion. We have currently have zero federal programs designed to reduce recidivism. I think that's how you say that. Of how likely inmates are, are, are to commit a second crime. Uh, Secretary of the Agriculture, President Irwin, is good to see you. Snap also known as food stamps currently provides nutrition to 62 million wow 62 million individuals helping reduce the poverty effect by two percent the program costs 74 billion dollars per year uh WIC or the supplemental nutritional assistance program for women infants and children uh provides nutritional assistance to another 7 million just about 7 million individuals reducing the poverty effect by 0.1 percent the program costs 5.2 billion dollars our need-based school lunch program provides free lunch to 19.4 million students and provides reduced price lunch to 2.5 million students. 43% of students receive food assistance. 43% of students, wow, receive food assistance from the federal government. This program costs approximately 10.05 billion dollars per year. Uh, then program, then a breakfast program provides free breakfast to 19.4 million students and it provides reduced price lunches. Or breakfast to 2.5 million students and then 43 percent wait that is the thing this thing the same thing this program costs 3.1 billion dollars anyway uh health and human services let's look at you 85 percent of our constituents have access to health care since last year access to health care has decreased by 2.9 percent i think that's probably because of my reduced funding to some certain programs uh, Medicare provides healthcare coverage to 39.5 million individuals or 11% of the population, and then Medicare provides healthcare coverage to 58.1 million individuals or 16% of the population at a cost of $760 million per year. Uh, is it just me, or did most African countries gain independence in the 70s? Yes, that's in the 60s. Between the 50s and the 70s was essentially when Africa, a lot of the uh, colonial powers kind of like backwarded from Africa because they started to realize what the heck they were doing and uh, yeah uh, essentially a lot of colonial powers it wasn't until the 70s whenever they finally just kind of looked at Africa and said okay we're not doing any good over here let's go ahead and pull out so uh, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, uh, I've been looking over the data and it appears that the country has approximately 1 million homeless individuals. Of those, 100% have reporting access to some form of homeless shelter. Uh, since last year, homelessness has increased by 17%. Wow. Uh, yeah, over a million homeless individuals in the United States. That's unacceptable. Let's go ahead and fix that situation. Public housing programs currently provide, provide assistance to approximately 2.8 million of families, and we calculate that this helps reduce the poverty effect by 0.4%. Maybe we can actually expand the eligibility that we have for uh, for public housing. So let's... Cannabis marijuana sales tax. Uh, free community college. That's only less than $10 billion per year, I think. Uh, social services, foster care, states, federal. Uh, okay, Secretary of Agri Secretary of Transportation. That's great. 
um, 87.3% graduation rate, and since 2029, the graduation rate has decreased by 0%, and then Commissioner of the Social Security Administration. Uh, Social Security provides financial assistance to approximately 49.8 million individuals at a cost of $1 trillion. By, by our calculations, approximately 31.08 million retirees would be impoverished without Social Security. So that's something to uh, keep a keep an eye on. Uh, corporate tax. All right, let's go to the next week and let's go ahead and create our federal budget. Um, did you have the midterms yet, PG? No, we have not. We are actually in the year. We are actually, yes, we are in the year of the midterms. So everyone's going through their primaries right now, and then we're going to be campaigning very hard as the primaries uh, come to a close, and then the actual campaign starts up. So we're uh, just in the year of the midterms, and we're hoping to keep our hands on the House of Representatives to uh, essentially have a clear uh, agenda by the end of our term. That means we can do everything we can with a Congress that is our, on our side, uh, to get through my agenda. So we're going to be campaigning extremely hard and extremely uh, efficiently, and hopefully we help hold on to the House of Representatives. The Senate, again, I'm not really worried about. Imagine if it was a red wave, lol. Yep. Um, just make sure you have a good approval rating. We'll go ahead and check on that after we do this federal budget. Uh, so instead of just kind of like uh narrating what i'm doing with the federal budget i'm essentially what i'm gonna do um i'm not gonna talk i'm basically just gonna go through and i'm gonna do it to my liking i guess because usually i do like to pay attention to these federal budgets i like to uh, fix the situation that we have with the federal debt budget deficit i want to try to uh, get rid of that federal budget deficit by the time uh we i want to get rid of this federal budget deficit by the time the midterms roll around um, and if, essentially the way we do that is uh, get rid of this and then don't do anything and don't pass anything that will increase the federal budget deficit. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we can do. All right. So I've seen many, many incumbents lose the presidency in the political process. Yeah, exactly. It's really easy to win a presidency if you're the incumbent. Um, but yeah, I have seen, I've seen, see, okay, so I have seen a lot of people uh, lose their incumbency because they are the incumbent president, but then they end up uh, getting just completely destroyed by the Democratic Party, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. They get, they get destroyed by the other party when they um when they do that whenever they run for re-election win the primaries but then lose the re-election bid so uh primaries maybe i won't have an issue but the re-election itself yes i'm gonna have an issue uh payments of states for child support no
So apparently with Social Security, we actually do have a balanced budget with Social Security. We're making 1.06 billion trillion dollars with Social Security, but then with the expenditure, we're only spending 1.04 trillion dollars. So we essentially have a 20 billion dollar surplus with the Social Security, uh, and we only need just uh, just about every year. We on, that's the only time we ever need to touch it. We need to uh, mess with the eligibility rate. Definitely get uh raise that eligibility rate because if you leave that literally over at 65 you're going to be spending a crap ton of money because your health care is really good you're gonna your people are living longer you're gonna have an age crisis in about 10 years so uh definitely keep it uh at keep it in uh, a, a, an appropriate level depending on what uh time i guess you're in whether it's in like the 2040s, 2060s, uh, if you leave this, literally again, if you leave this eligibility age all the way down at the where it is in the beginning, your surplus, the, at least with the federal government, you're going to die. Like it hurts. It really hurts. I did that one time with Florida and refused to do it. And I watched the, bu the federal budget deficit, the interest payments like per year by 2045 was, base was like a trillion dollars just for interest payments alone on the national debt so uh definitely fix uh, that that's why you really need to fix that situation especially if you have the power to do so uh, and whenever you're a president you do have the power to do so uh 15 billion dollars oh yeah let's definitely go ahead and do a marijuana sales tax um uh, oh, and it's only gonna net us about a billion dollars let's do 10 percent 1.2 billion dollars um renewable energy tax credit let's go ahead and raise that to about five cents and interest payments on the national debt is 555 billion dollars and the irs funding and administrative cost funding let's get right into the new no i'm just kidding uh, I could get rid of the earned income tax credit, honestly, but I don't know what the reaction would be to that in election year. Um, that actually reduces the national debt. Okay, what happens if... Okay, let's do you at 45%. You at 42. We just slightly uh see see in an election year what am i doing i'm, I'm about the george hw bush this thing uh but let's do it anyway <laughs> uh less than thirty-eight let let's put you at 15 less than ninety-one thousand. so that's the middle class let's do you see see it's barely it's barely even budging it's barely even budging i'm increasing these things by several percentage percentile and they it's just not generating that much income less than 190,000 35 301 tax the hell out of the middle class lol <laughs> can you refinance the debt not yet um, but that does sound like a good idea. I'd, I'd love to refinance my debt. It's just like refinancing of mo refinancing a mortgage. Um, I mean, again, I could I could get rid of the, the earned income tax credit. That's sucking off a hundred and fifty billion dollars for people to get a bunch of money for their kids. Or, I mean, at the same time, I could reduce the tax credit. I mean. $3,000 seems a bit much for, for one child. Let's go ahead and put you down to... Let's put you... No, let's do... Let's do... Let's do gradually, okay. 2500 2500 sounds about right. $287 billion is my federal budget deficit. It's kind of hard to predict since a lot of districts are flipping to the GOP. Yeah, there's a lot of Long Island districts that are flipping to the GOP. Let's go ahead and... Let me actually look at the House of Representatives. The Republicans really, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying Trump was right with the red wave, but he also kind of was correct with the red wave because there's a lot of red. There's a lot of pickups that the Republicans really, really did a good job in. 
I mean, I mean, in California, for example, Orange County, Orange County is back red. I mean, California District 48 in, uh, in Southern, it's like South of Los Angeles. That one flipped red. California District 39, uh, Young Kim got elected there very narrowly, but, uh, in California District 25, uh, the Democrat was actually in the lead whenever I saw this, and this was actually the, uh, the district where, I forgot what her name was, but she got, uh, she, she got exposed, basically, someone, for some reason, thought it was a great idea to post just, like, her having these interactions with certain people and then she had tattoos on her body and she had to resign from that seat and i felt so bad for her because i mean there was a couple of things that were you know a little bit issue ridden with what she was doing uh i mean i don't know i mean what do you guys think if you guys actually know what i'm talking about do you guys think that was wrong of her do you think she should she has she have resigned or or what like what what are your thoughts on that um, with California District 31, again, Republicans are in the lead. TJ Cox, uh, TJ Cox, I've, I've heard of him, and he's losing his seat by 2,000 votes. Wow. Uh, in Utah, Burgess Owens is in the lead in his race. In, uh, Iowa District 2, you want to talk about a nail-biter? That, this race in Iowa, Iowa District 2, that's literally within 50 votes. I'm not I'm not making that up 50 it's within 50 like Florida was in within 490 something Iowa 2 right now is 50 just 50 it's it like 50 58 I think no 48 actually it's 40 so 48 it's just it's like yeah kind of 50 but it's still 48 anyway I'm so, I'm sorry for getting so distracted but um Probably one of the most surprising house flips for me were Florida District 26 and Florida District 27 because the Democrats and Republicans never once considered those pr competitive. Yeah, I would definitely say that too. Uh, those two were actually very much big surprises for me. Um, well, actually, if you actually kind of look at it, Florida District 27 was the big one for me. Uh, Florida District 26, uh, you could kind of see that coming, especially with what Florida was doing in the previous election. And Florida very much shifted over to the right in this election. I mean, they shifted over so much to the right that the the Hispanic community in the state of Florida that was a reliable, a very, very reliable Democrat demographic, Democrat demographic, yeah, I know. They were very reliable for the Democratic Party, especially in places like Miami-Dade County, uh, Broward County, I mean, Broward County just about did the same thing that they did from 2016, but, uh, it was Palm Beach County and Miami-Dade County. Both of those counties, with the exception of Broward County, shifted so much to the right that in Miami, Florida District 27 was won by Maria Elvira, uh, Salazar by several percentage points, and, I mean... If I'm if I'm looking at it correctly, Miami is literally in this district. It's South Miami. That is South Miami, and it voted for Republicans. I mean, if you don't think that the Democrats have an issue with with uh, certain demographics, this is this is the this is the the warning bells ringing. I mean, that is huge for Democrats to lose in demographics just like that. They're not supposed to be losing. I mean, what I saw it was in uh, Florida, the the Cuban minority that uh, shifted from like 50 percentage points Republican to about 65 percent Republican. And then Hispanics as a whole went from, I believe it was like 56 uh, percent, from 56 percent Democrat all the way to 50 percent Republican. 
the, there were huge Democrat demographic shifts in the state of Florida that no one really saw coming. I mean, a lot of people saw. I saw it coming, honestly. I, I've there's a couple of videos where I was literally saying there's demographic shifts that are about to happen in this election that is going to be extremely lopsided. I honestly kind of knew that white people. We're going to shift away from the Republican Party, but then minorities would start shifting toward the Republican Party. That is a shift that is really unprecedented in this day and age. I mean, why are these Democrat demographics shifting to the Republicans whenever they should be staying with the Democratic Party? Mainly, it's because the Democrats are somewhat taking advantage of these demographics. They, they look at them as, hey we are fighting for you and we want your vote and then don't really say anything else afterward <laughs> so it, it, it's an interesting scenario uh unemployed okay let's go ahead and fin finish up this federal budget i know i've been talking for so long and not paying attention to my federal budget uh but for those who are watching leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new if you want to see more of this content just hit that bell notification icon and if you want to support me in a more personal way uh just hit that uh dollar icon on the on the chat that is a super chat where you can actually not only super chat but you can also become a member you can uh, send a super sticker and all of that goes directly to me or at least about uh f i think it's a uh, 60 of it goes to me uh youtube does take a lot of it, it kind of sucks but uh yeah it definitely uh support me there and uh let's go ahead and continue on uh, we do have a surplus with the Social Security Trust Fund. That is great. Uh, so I think we need to continue reducing spending in some certain areas uh, to continue on. Uh, only $327 million if we do the high school equivalency program. Mm. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and pass that. Uh, transportation. Let's reduce you to... 45 billion dollars and reduced to to 23 billion dollars democrats only gained three seats yep they only gained three seats and or flipped three seats and i think one of them was in no one none of them were in texas there were so many in the texas area especially in the dallas fort worth area that were so set to flip to the democrats and they didn't and there was it was literally the district directly under me that encompasses dallas fort worth international airport and then a little bit it kind of like it gets closer to the dallas downtown dallas area which is traditionally more democratic democrat um but the district directly under me was a very close election and the uh the republican beth van duane dean dean uh she won uh by just about almost um, yeah about 1.2 points she won by uh but then the other districts such as texas district 33 district 30 and district 32 uh, District 32 actually flipped in 2018. It was actually a part of that blue wave year with the Democrats. Uh, Colin Alred got elected in 2018 from a traditionally Republican district. This is south of Plano, Texas, which Plano is in is encompassed in Texas District 3 and is rep is uh, represented by Van Taylor. Uh, that district is very much ruby red. It is very, very, very red. um all right faa i'm actually gonna increase spending for you uh federal transit administration the fta it is responsible for managing mass transit across the nation and it, it distributes funds to help and help create and maintain mass transit programs let's go ahead and increase you to about 15 billion dollars uh, and then the Federal Railroad Administration, which is responsible for creating and overseeing railroads. Let's go ahead and increase you by about $500 million. Uh, energy, we have Office of Nuclear Energy. Go ahead and give you full funding. And we really, again, need to... Let's increase the unemployment payroll tax.
and then increase the income tax limit. So this basically means the income tax limit, basically it's like everything after this, it's you can make $8,000 tax free, and then after that $8,000, then after that, that's whenever you start getting taxed. Uh, the United States has such a weird taxation system. I don't, I honestly sometimes don't understand it. The unemployment insurance program provides recently unemployed individuals with a source of revenue while they look for unemployment. Benefits are temporary and individuals receiving benefits must actively seek employment. Um, Georgia 7, Georgia 6 was a nail batter for me, but, uh, Handel did really bad, lol. Yeah, I believe he actually did. Let me actually look. That was Georgia 7. Georgia 6 was definitely going to be going to the Democrats. That one, Karen Handel was actually... Why is Karen Handel still running? Stop running! No wonder they keep losing that district. It's because the same person keeps freaking running. I don't know why Karen Handel thinks it's like such a good idea to just keep running in the same district at the same time. Like, it's probably because she's the only Republican that wants to do so. No one else wants to run. So, uh, see, it, it it's it's too it's too it's too too much. Charleston's district actually flipped a Republican in South Carolina. Um, I see, so much money went into South Carolina and they didn't do it. Uh, all right, let me go ahead and submit this budget. $280 billion is my federal budget deficit. We can try to fix that as the year goes on. Um, should, everything should be able to pass. Um, yep, should be able to pass. So we have tax reform. So this goes, see, they skewered it again. They skewered it again. I don't understand why they keep doing that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and support it because I don't have a choice. Uh, high school equivalency, support, and SNAP, 125. And redu uh, benefits do go down to $1,200. So how much am I saving on this? Uh, compared to the current policy, this legislation will decrease eligibility by 617,000 individuals and decrease expenditure by $6.5 billion. And an expert testimony on SNAP, so let's go ahead and support that bill. Uh, public housing and eligibility rate goes from 9 .6, 9 9.6% to 12%, so let's look. Uh, Cole Skinner, this program will cost, will cost approximately $23 billion, which is equivalent to 0.5% of the total budget. Uh, this will increase expenditure by $5.3 billion, and then will uh, provide housing assistance to 3.6 million eligible individuals, which increases eligibility by almost a million people. So that's great news for us. I just, you know, all those conservative policies, and I'll do one, one liberal policy. I'll do one, even though it increased the budget more than it needed to be. <laughs> uh, but that's politics for you. That is politics for you. Uh, increases tax credit from two cents to five cents per kilowatt hour of electricity produced and unemployment insurance goes from 1.5 to 2 percent and increases taxable income from seven thousand eight thousand dollars and 12 let's go to that 10 percent cannabis tax and that is good that is good that is good and let's go ahead and go to week 19 and campaign period should start all right we have a Senate candidate from Nevada, all of these guys here, even Texas 27. Let's go ahead and uh, visit you real quick. All right, 31,000 and fundraisers. I'm going to go ahead and just do all the rallies to get these voters on the rolls. And then let's pass the budget as they come through. 37,000. Is it 37,000? I, th I think this is nationwide, so it's not really keeping a tally on on that. Republican from Pennsylvania, is that a, is that a senator? Where are you from? Are you a, Jake, Jake Sweeney from Pennsylvania? Huh. All right, 31. We're gonna continue.
Dems hated John McCain until until Trump got into office. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. Um, hey, what's going on, Albert? Welcome to the live stream. I actually haven't seen you in a while, but I do remember. Um, I think I remember you, but uh, the profile picture seems familiar. Uh, haha, Georgia 11. Where the heck is that? Georgia 11. Where are you? Georgia 11. Is that? Yep, that is a Republican district, so uh, that is good. But Douglas Horn, his name is Douglas. That's a. Uh, it's kind of funny. You know, he's from Georgia. Uh, Senate in Mississippi. Hopefully, we're actually going through going through with some uh, battleground states. Uh, let's do fundraising six hundred, and then let's attend three rallies. Let's support, support, attend all rallies, attend all rallies. See again. Uh, Literally, some that, that is, again, this game is literally just sometimes a clicking game, but it's also it does have the challenge in it too, so it kind of works out. If Trump is more paleo conservative. I'd like him more. I've kind of looked into paleo conservatism, and it, it, it's 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 kind of good, but then it's also kind of bad. I don't really like how they have a lot of a uh, backwards social views. Um. Paleoconservatism is something I have looked into, though. I know a lot of... I actually know a lot of people who consider themselves paleoconservatives. Uh, hi, PG. Thanks for remembering me. How are you doing? I have been well. I have been uh, great. Just have been lacking in posting, unfortunately. But I'm slowly rising above that and coming back uh, to regularly scheduled uh, streaming and videos. So... Look forward to that. Uh, all fundraisers. Let's go to the next turn. And the elections come through. Let's go to the federal senate. And Democrats gain one seat. They Republicans lost in the state of Arizona, unfortunately. Um, let's look to see what that was. It was a seat gained by the Democratic Party. Uh, again, it was uh, just as close in as, as in our thing. Uh, Matt Walls, who is the incumbent in the state of Arizona... Uh, lost to uh, and Andrea Grande. Sounds so familiar. I don't know why. Um, you know, elections in a state. It was about a thousand votes that separated the two. Like actually, less than a thousand votes. Uh, and then let's look at the House of Representatives. Let's uh, hope. Let's hope, hope, hope that this stays with us. And nope. <laughs> damn. 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 I absolutely knew it. I, I knew it. This is uh, uh, 51 seats in my midterm. In my midterm, Democrats gained 51 seats in the House of Representatives. Uh, but fortunately, fortunately, the Republicans hold on to the Senate. So unfortunately, for the next two years, I have to deal with a Democratic House of Representatives. Uh, mostly it looks like that Democrats gained in the state of Arizona. They gained in the state of Nebraska. Uh, they gained in Iowa. Look at, look how blue Iowa is. But Wisconsin is red. Michigan is red. Uh, Pennsylvania is probably, uh, shifting a little bit more red. Uh, so hopefully we actually hold on to them in the, uh, in the uh, presidential election, Ohio is not as red as I would like it to be, especially in North Carolina, Georgia, and even Florida and Texas are trending a little bit bluer. So uh, what does this mean for my re-election bid? We'll find out. Uh, this is what the map looks like in 2028. So uh, let's go to the next year. And then we have the local elections, including school board, city council, and mayoral elections. Uh, Marjorie Green is good for the Democrat ads. Uh, I actually do remember Marjorie Green. Uh, she, I think she is, she's like a probably a classic paleo conservative. That's what I kind of get, kind of vibes I get from her. Uh, I don't want to look at all of these, but I do want to see housing and urban development, homelessness as increased. Even though I did the public housing assistance, you god dang retard. Um. <laughs> 
uh secretary of the treasury federal deficit this year is going down i'm i'm it's i'm glad that it's going down i mean we're still paying a lot i mean okay so this is actually really good news in my in my administration i have uh kept interest payments on the federal deficit at 555 billion dollars and the federal budget deficit has been going down uh, so that is great news for my administration. So we have a loss with the House of Representatives, but we do have some good things going toward us. Let's go ahead and look at the metrics and overview. Uh, so during my administration, looks like economy has been doing a little bit better. Education has been doing a slightly better, but taxation definitely... Uh, no one really likes my taxation policies. What did they start at? 55% and then after I got in office, it just slammed back down. Uh, healthcare. Sorry, I have I have to fix this budget deficit that the previous administration started. Uh, crime has been doing uh, better. Infrastructure is doing a little bit worse. Maybe we can uh, reduce that or increase the funding to it. National debt again has been doing a little bit better. As debt per person was seventy-seven thousand dollars. Now it's seventy-three thousand uh, dollars. So that's look at this. It was actually trending downward. It was about fifty downward as the administration started going on. This is my election period, and then as soon as I get in office, it starts going up. Uh, maybe I can get that up, up above 40% before my next, uh, before the next election. Uh, immigration is doing a point better. Uh, increased, increase to the funding that we actually have has actually reduced the illegal immigrants. So let's look, it's, uh, started at 49% and has been going up. So immigration approval is very important to us. Uh, military has been doing about the same. Uh, then a department effectiveness is slightly down, but also above uh, its original. So uh, was at a low of about 71%, um, then went up and then up and up, 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 kind of went down. And then this was my election right here so we were trending about 89 percent department effectiveness and then as soon as i get an office after my first year uh it goes up to above 97 98 percent and then now it's trending just around 99 percent all right let's look at budgets 214 billion dollars so this is the revenue and expenditure so again this was all of the administrations before me and then this is my election right here and then this is what we got it to uh, in the years afterward uh healthcare spending look at that as i actually uh, overtook health spending social security overtook health to 1.3 percent of the expenditure and then just shot back down after we did some of the reforms uh since we actually basically this is the only way that you can actually um reform a quote-unquote social security uh let's look so looks like it's around around about a quarter about 50 percent now uh, maybe less than 50 percent slightly all right social security and this is the we had about 36 million billion dollars no 360 yeah 360 billion dollars in the social security fund and then as soon as i got into office we kind of fixed that situation immediately because that's one of the biggest things that you really need to get a get a lock on before you either run out of money or something because whenever you run out of money uh, this this really starts eating into your into your budget it it really kills you in the end um so keep an eye on this social security trust fund also for medicare and for the road trust and for the treasury as well uh the road trust so that's 42 billion dollars that i could be saving if i actually fix the situation and then medicare i that's 183 billion dollars actually i have an idea let's fix let's fix medicare real quick and i think we'll be able to have medicare fixed by the time uh, by the time re-election comes around. So let's go to legislation. 
let's go to health and Medicare, Medicaid. So what do we got? What do I need to fix? Medicare. So that is Medicare, $183 billion. So I just need to increase about almost $200 billion for that Medicare. So that, okay, so it is a tax rate. All right, here we go. So let's increase. Let's do it at 2.5 and then increase the eligibility to 70 years old. Let's increase, no, 13,200 and then let's increase the tax rate to 3%. All right, we so again that's about 180 billion dollars that's gonna gonna get wiped off of my deficit so let's send that over to congress see if it passes the democratic oh man dang um 2.3 to 3 68 to 69 so that's all that got changed so it has an amendment attached to it now uh submit an amendment to this bill amendment passed 23 to 16 and the bill has made failed to make it out of committee with a vote of 17 to 22 will not become law. All right, Democratic obstructionists uh, do not want me to me to amend uh, Medicare. So that sucks. That really sucks. Uh, let's go here and try to do it again in my federal budget. So let's do 3% and then let's do 70 years old and that puts a 4.9 billion dollar surplus into my medicare trust fund democrats only have the house of representatives i lost the i lost the house of representatives even though i had both of them on my side uh but republicans do have control of the senate so that is a uh, that is okay that's good 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 uh let's do thirteen thousand five hundred dollars and we lose that surplus that we had uh let's do three and a quarter three and a quarter and it's gonna get 763 billion dollars and then that would make it 68 billion dollars that we have in uh the medicare trust fund and that is 127 billion dollars to my federal budget deficit and it does again reduce my no total national debt um i essentially what i need to do is get rid of 127 billion dollars uh worth of spending that i have all right let's go ahead and submit that and gets rejected by the senate um god that sucks all right let's go ahead and go through this year run for re-election should i run for re-election boys what am I doing? I've been live streaming for a whole hour. 59% approval. Oh god, I think my approval has been going down. Yeah, it has been going down, especially with Republicans. Ouch. All right. <laughs> run for re-election. Whoa, AP wants to run wants him to run for re-election. All right, let's go ahead and run for re-election, I guess. Uh Frida Carter. Let's go ahead and pick a brand new campaign manager, Norris Houston. Uh you look beautiful, so let's go ahead and choose you. All right, and our campaign platform is going to be to reduce the taxes that I increase. <laughs> So let's reduce the income tax. Let's uh um poverty, let's fight poverty and fight crime. 
We actually have fixed crime. That's actually a really good thing. Uh, opponents. We are we are uncontested. Great, great news. That is great. So that means I am the Republican nominee. Let's go ahead and train all of my staff for this uh, uh, election campaign. And... Yeah, look at all that money just flowing in. Just flowing in, boys. Just flowing in. Um... All right, let's predict the election. So we're gonna we're gonna try to hold on to the state of Arizona. We're gonna try to hold on to state to the state of Colorado. Uh, well, actually, so let's hope that we win it, but then just assume that the Democrats are gonna that are gonna flip it this time. Uh, Florida, we're gonna try to hold on to. Um, in Iowa, we're gonna we're gonna hold on to Iowa, and in Maine, we're gonna hold on to Maine. We're gonna try to hold on to michigan we're gonna try nevada new hampshire north carolina obviously that throws us over the top 271 electoral votes ohio is a must win for the republican party uh and wisconsin wisconsin we're gonna go ahead and hold on to you what about pennsylvania where is pennsylvania democrat see if you can do throw you over to the top for the Republican. Uh, okay, let's close you, and let's do some economic growth ads. $25 million nationwide. Did I miss a first term for this, or is this the first election? Yeah, totally flip California. Uh, this is my re-election. And I think uh, since this is the first term live stream, then uh, in the second live stream we can, um, in the second live stream we just go through his second term. Uh, I will be right back, actually. All right, I am back, and let's go ahead and continue this presidential campaign. Um, okay, first off, let's go ahead and travel to the state of Wisconsin. And what we're going to do... Oh, crap, hang on. Okay, so this is where I'm going to do that. Okay, so let's choose volunteers. Let's do Florida. Um, okay, let's go through the, let's go through the list, actually. Arizona. Uh, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, uh, just because of good old Trump losing that place, I don't want to lose it myself. Uh, since this isn't a re-election bit, I swear to God, if this ends up turning out like Joe Biden or something, um, it's gonna suck. Uh, let's do Idaho, Indiana, uh, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine. We're gonna do Maine, try to increase our margins in Maine. Uh, let's... Maybe. No. Yeah, okay, let's do Maryland. Let's do Massachusetts, too. Actually, I know exactly where to do. Let's do Connecticut. Let's try to win Connecticut. Instead of Maryland and Maine, let's go ahead and concentrate on Connecticut. Because I've seen Connecticut go for the Republican Party several times over. Uh, Connecticut, for some reason in this game, can flip. So I'm going to I'm going to concentrate a little bit on Connecticut, try to see if I can get their electoral votes. If we win Connecticut, then it is absolutely over. 
Uh, Minnesota, let's let's shoot for Minnesota this time. Um, let's go ahead and hold on to Nebraska, Nevada, uh, New Hampshire, North Carolina, um, New Mexico. No, that, I mean that could be close, but I've never really seen a Republican win New Mexico. Ohio is a must win. Pennsylvania is a must win. Uh, South Carolina, Texas, we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, Virginia, let's go ahead and open some campaign offices there, and as well as the last state of Wisconsin. Uh, let's do phone banking. Let's do some door knocking, and 30% is going to go over to fundraising. And then let's go ahead and do 5% for yard signs, and... 20% for door knocking. Connecticut. Okay, make sure. Did I? I totally didn't do it. Dang it! Oh, God, I didn't do it. Uh, okay, Arizona. Uh, Colorado. Connecticut. Florida. Iowa. Uh, Maine. Michigan. Minnesota. Nevada. New Hampshire, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, Virginia, Wisconsin, uh, who else, 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 PG try to win Texas by 20 again, yeah, okay, um, fundraising, okay, ah, I have to select them all again, god dang it, uh huh. Kill me. Okay, Arizona. Let's do California too. Uh, Colorado, <laughs> Connecticut, Florida, Georgia, uh, Indiana, uh, Michigan, Maine, Minnesota, Missouri. Since I've okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I've seen Missouri go over to the Democrats a couple of times. Nevada, New Hampshire, North Carolina. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. All right, finally, let's do this. Okay, let's do let's do 50 per state. I think we can afford that. Since we are the President of the United States, we should be able to afford that. Okay, we can't afford it. <laughs> uh, volunteers. Close. Close. Let's do all of them, and let's do 15. Okay, I think that should actually equal it out. Campaign, finance, 3.4, no? I mean, we're still in the campaign, like campaign. So I think, yep, we're actually still equaling it out, so I think we're good.
I've totally been talking this entire time without my mic. I literally hate how I mute my mic and then I'm just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not going to try to repeat anything I just said. <laughs> I've been talking like that for like five minutes. What I did say is that I'm not running against anyone and that uh, there is a full race happening right now within the Democratic Party. Um... So we're not going to pay attention to the Democrats. Well, I mean, let's go ahead and see what they got. And, and Anna Sofia Vasquez, I have a tax plan I believe will be good for the economy. It, was, it, it would address many of the concerns people have with the economy. People are unhappy with the disparity between incomes. Other thinks, others think it is an acceptable part of the economy. Whether or not the minimum wage should be increased is a very divisive issue. Yeah, that literally gets a lot, thing, a lot of things said. Like, I don't even know what the heck you just said. You're basically saying, well this is happening but then other people think that's okay like okay um who are you anna sofia vasquez you were the esteemed u.s senator from the state of california four-term senator of the state of california let's look you are a psychologist then a two-term state representative one-term state senator uh, then you were a u.s representative for three terms 2005 to 2011 um and she's actually a leadership position uh she was the chair of the progressive democrats from 2023 to 2025 uh the senate minority leader from 2029 to 2031 and then the chair of the progressive democrats as of right now and then she's still a u.s senator from the state of california and she is the ranking member of the appropriations committee in the house of representatives or in the senate um, and then in the Judiciary Committee, she's a part of the Antitrust Competition Policy and Consumer Rights Subcommittee, uh, Immigration and National Subinterest Subcommittee, National Interest Subcommittee, Privacy Technology and Law Subcommittee, and she's ranking member, uh, and then the Constitution Subcommittee. And then she's also a part of the Intelligence Committee, the Rules and Administrations Committee, and the Native, Americans, Native American Affairs Committee. Um... What is she? Does it tell me who she is? All politicians, elections. These are the Senate. So she's been in the Senate since the beginning of the game. All right, let's continue on. And we'll see who wins Iowa, and then we'll really start paying attention to the um to the situation within the democratic primaries because i really don't i'm basically just fundraising this entire time um pennsylvania we really need to go rally some people in the state of pennsylvania democrats chester so we're gonna shoot for about at least again fifty thousand people in each of these states And in, what about here? Let's do Ohio, Wisconsin, where are you? Minnesota. We're doing the, we're basically targeting the Rust Belt. Uh, let's shoot for, no, let's do Iowa, Michigan. Pennsylvania. There you are. Right, wage ad. Let's do $10 million. Get that support from those states. If I actually campaign like that, like liberally in some of the Rust Belt states, but then conservatively in some of the other states, uh, I think I would actually be able to to flip Pennsylvania. If we can flip Pennsylvania, that's going to be a huge thing. Literally just shows, yeah, you just won the election. Um, let's do some national views. All right, we are four weeks from the election. Make no mistake, my heart goes to see, warms to see Washington go red in the political process. I just find it very unrealistic. Um, I've actually played in Washington before, and I, or like once, 
and then I, 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 I was governor, and I had a democratic, um, I had a democratic legislature, but then, um, I lost re-election. I actually could not win re-election. I, and I played over it like so many times. I was just like, I need to, I need to win. Whoa! What happened to our federal deficit? We had that so low. What happened? God dang it, Democrats! What did you do? What did you do? You messed up the, my 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 beautiful budget, my beautiful budget, and the national debt went up. God dang it! And my Medicare thing is gone. Ugh, dang! I'm like, I'm just mad. Hey, speaking of, when are you ever going to continue Benjamin Pickles in Washington Three? Uh, might have to restart that one. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I could, I mean, no, I'll, I'll have to see if I still have to save. I, I think I still should have it. Um, it's just, I don't know whether the updates are going to be applicable into that game because it was so long ago. Um, speaking of Benjamin Pickles, something, someone in here is called Benjamin Pickles. Uh, Social Security is still great, so that's great. If I win re-election, I'll go ahead and deal with the federal deficit then. Um, yeah, protege, what's up? Benjamin Pickles, my boy. Age 62, governor of Texas since the year 2023, and in 2035 he's actually... We could actually retire. Uh, Benjamin Pickles, are you sure you want to dismiss? If they currently hold political office, they'll continue to exist in the world, but you will not be able to influence their characters. Uh, 62, let's, let's send you to the Senate. Let's go ahead and send, send my boy, uh, several time governor of the state of Texas, and let's go ahead and send you over to the Senate. You're going to go ahead and advance. Um, so you should be able to run in another let's see what you're gonna do next election senator of texas uh view all politicians elections is there a senate race this year because i'm throwing you right there in the middle nation look how narrow that budget deficit is look at that good increase in revenue and then a decrease in uh, expenditure uh just just around there just 280 28 billion dollars yes in 2032 there's a cent there's a texas election okay so we are throwing him into a race that uh should be able to win a presidential primary results all right let's see let's go ahead and pay attention for this for the democratic party because we have no one running against me in the republican primary so i guess there's not going to be any primaries uh, but there will be democratic primaries um so montgomery hubbard wins iowa he won in iowa uh came up second was in anna sofia vasquez and then came up third was charles archer let's go ahead and go to the next one and view primary results and montgomery hubbard wins in the state of new hampshire the new hampshire caucuses came to an end and same results here montgomery hubbard is number one anna sofia vasquez is number two and charles archer is number three and in the next one we have nevada and south carolina should be coming up next and then after south carolina it's going to be a super tuesday but big difference in this one uh, in the state of Nevada, Charles Archer wins in the state of Nevada. Coming up second was Montgomery Hubbard, who had been winning the past two contests. And in uh, number three, we have Anna Sofia Vasquez with 13 delegates. Uh, Democratic debate. We're going to ignore you. You think Texas will have a Democratic senator soon or not IRL? I don't think so. Increases Medicare payroll tax rate from 2.35 to 3, and then decreases Medicare eligibility age from 68 to 67. Uh, I'm going to veto it. Well, let's look. Will cost $878 billion. It will bring in a tax revenue of $695 billion. Yeah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to veto it. Okay, good. Uh, that's the first bill that I've actually uh, vetoed that um, was not overridden by Congress. 
Speaking of, am I wrong? But I don't... Did Trump ever use his veto power? I don't... I don't remember a specific instance whenever Trump used his veto power. I remember when... I remember whenever the media was making such a big deal whenever uh, Obama vetoed his his uh, some some legislation, and I think Congress actually overrode that veto. I think no, it was a uh, it was a bill that Obama voted uh, vetoed. It was a uh, to make Saudi Arabia legally liable for the deaths of ni- uh, the deaths related to nine eleven, um, and then in uh, he vetoed that legislation, but then Congress came back and then overrode that veto. But Trump, I can't remember whether he's used that veto power or not. Didn't Trump veto that Yemen resolution by Sanders, Sanders and Mike Lee? Uh, maybe. I can't remember. I. That's the thing, is that Trump has used his veto power so, like, vaguely and rarely, actually that he really hasn't vetoed anything. U.S. Senate vetoes by President Donald Trump. Okay, so in... 2019... President Donald J. Trump has vetoed eight bills in his presidency. There have been 2,582 presidential vetoes since 1789. And, okay, so... Donald Trump vetoed six things. One, two, three, four, five, six of them were in 2019. And then two of them were in uh, 2020. And so... The first one, what the first one that okay, so his first veto, literally his first veto, was whenever Congress, whenever he declared a national emergency at the southern border, and then Congress came back and then overrode that veto, um, and then Saudi Arabia, United Kingdom, and Northern Ireland, Kingdom of Spain, and Italian Republic arms sales disapproval resolution, he vetoed that. Uh, there was a UAE arms sales disapproval resolution, he vetoed that. So it was a lot of, it was basically arms sales resolutions. Yes, okay, so here it is. Uh, the Yemen War Powers Resolution. Uh, that one was passed by the Senate 53 to 45, and Donald Trump vetoed it. That was the Yemen War Powers Resolution, or Senate Joint Resolution 7, if you guys want to look it up yourselves. Again, that is Senate Joint Resolution 7. Related to the national emergency declared on February 15th, the House uh, declared that, and then President Trump vetoed it. And then the other ones that he vetoed this year were the Borough Defense Institutional Accountability Regulation Rule. Trump vetoed that. And then uh, the Iran War Powers Resolution. We actually, if we actually think back at the beginning of the year, um, I remember Trump did that. Uh, drone strike on Kasim al- uh, it was that Iranian war general uh, Salamani, I believe his name was uh, and he vetoed the resolution that was supposed to restrict his war powers it was actually a resolution uh, comparable to the war powers resolution that was passed by Congress during uh, the presidency of Lyndon Johnson back in the back in the 1960s and that was the resolution that actually got us to further ourselves into the Vietnam War. All right, week ten. We th- I think this is Super Tuesday. Yep, Super Tuesday. Let's see who who won Super Tuesday. All right, uh, Anna Sophia Vasquez wins in the state of Alabama, ties it with uh, Montgomery Hubbard in the state of Alaska. Uh, in uh, they tied in uh, Arkansas. Anna Sofia Vasquez wins in Colorado. Uh, Montgomery Hubbard wins in Georgia. They both tie it again in Idaho. You always see these ties. I always see that. Uh, Montgomery Hubbard wins in Kansas. Wins in Louisiana. Wins in Massachusetts. Uh, wins in Maine. Again, these are very slim victories. So he's winning, but he's vi- winning by a very, very, very narrow majority. Uh, 
Montgomery wins in North Carolina. That's a huge one. He wins in Minnesota. That's a huge one. Um, he ties in North Dakota. He wins in Nebraska. He wins in New York, but Charles Archer actually came up second in New York. Uh, in Oklahoma, Montgomery Hubbard wins. Tennessee, Hubbard wins. In Texas, big one, Texas, Montgomery wins the state of Texas. Uh, Utah, Hubbard wins. Looks like Hubbard's a really good favorite for this election. Uh, in Virginia, he wins. In Vermont, he wins. Uh, in Washington, he wins. He wins the state of Washington. And in the state of Wyoming, he wins the state of Wyoming. So, congratulations to Montgomery Hubbard for winning Super Tuesday. He comes out on top of uh, everyone else. Charles Archer and Anna Sofia Vasquez are still in the presidential race. Anna Sofia Vasquez, $140 million. Uh, Montgomery Hubbard is one Super Tuesday with only 20 million vote with. 20 million bucks in the bank. Uh, Charles Archer, $12 million. Look at that. Anna Sophia Vasquez has the money. She has the money and she just lost Super Tuesday. Uh, what was she before? Let's look. She was a psych okay, so she was a psychologist. She's a, she's a senator from the state of California. Montgomery Hubbard, we haven't looked at him. Uh, he was a business development coordinator from 88 to 92. He was a property manager from 92 to 01. Uh, he was a chief communications officer from 01 to 2018. And then afterward, he ran for Senate in the state of Michigan. So he's actually a uh, several term uh, senator from the state of Michigan. And then now he's a candidate in the 2032 Democratic presidential primaries. Uh, and then Charles Archer, where are you? He was a city council member from 95 to 03. He was a state representative from 03 to 09. Uh, he was a state senator from 09 to 17. And then the governor of the state of Nevada for uh, almost a decade. Look at that. About eight year tenure uh, for the state of Nevada. Uh, congratulations to him. So we have a governor on the ballot. But Governor Archer is not really performing that well in the primaries right now he has 523 delegates so far in this presidential primary uh and then his last uh, uh history is candidate in the 2032 democratic presidential primaries uh we have 680 million dollars in the bank presidential primary results and let's look uh hubbard wins in hawaii he wins in the state he wins his home state of michigan i think um hubbard should be from michigan uh yeah okay so archer's the governor so this is governor archer senator hubbard and then senator vasquez so both of them so the two the top two right now are actually both senators of the united states uh in the state of mississippi montgomery hubbard wins in statement uh, state of mississippi by one delegate uh, we're going to continue campaigning in the state of Pennsylvania. And looks like Governor Archer has dropped out of the presidential race. So we are now just down to Montgomery Hubbard and Anna Sophia Vasquez. Uh, and the Super Tuesday 2 finally comes up with the states of Florida, Illinois, Missouri, and Ohio uh, up for grabs now. Montgomery Hubbard wins in the state of Florida. He wins in the state of Illinois. He wins in the state of Missouri and wins in the state of Ohio. Uh, Montgomery Hubbard does seem to be the presumptive Democratic nominee for this presidential race, so we sure are going to be facing off against Montgomery Hubbard. Uh, in the in the case of Anna Sophia Vasquez, unfortunately, even though she has the most money out of all of the other Democratic candidates, she is not winning these races. So unfortunately, we are not going to be seeing a woman on the ballot in 2032. Um... Let's continue to go. Presidential primary results. Arizona uh, is won by Montgomery Hubbard. Again, presumptive Democratic nominee. I guess as the President of the United States, I could probably declare him the ne presumptive Democratic nominee. Uh, with the dissolution of voters in the state of Nevada, we could actually go over to Nevada and start campaigning over there. Have very good independent support in the state of Nevada. Let's do Clark County. Washoe County, and let's do some national interviews. 
presidential primaries and Montgomery Hubbard wins the state of Wisconsin. And let's look. Yep, Montgomery Hubbard is now the Democratic nominee for the President of the United States. Uh, so we will be facing off against Montgomery Hubbard in the next race. So let's go to... Let's go here. Let's do some more minimum wage ads. Let's pump about $50 million into these states. Uh, let's also do Florida, Arizona... Nevada and it's gonna be it get a lot of Democratic support out of that let's do some more rallying and let's look at opponents again and again Montgomery Hubbard is the Democratic nominee for president for the year 2032 so we're gonna go ahead and start this full campaign this is finally the 2032 campaign up for grabs what state should i play in as a conservative democrat in the political process uh let's look conservative democrats conservative democrat um maybe michigan i would say michigan maybe ohio uh those would be really good uh, places uh, I, I would say like re very very much battleground states if you want to play anywhere in between uh such as like a conservative democrat or a liberal republican or something like that picking the battleground states is gonna be uh some of the ways you can do that maybe even places like georgia i mean 52 percent republican if you can bite off that republican vote which you can i've done that before um, if you can bite off that Republican vote, then you can do that. And if you're Repub if you're, I mean, if you're a conservative Democrat in the state of Georgia, and you're campaigning as a Republican, you're gonna get a lot of Republican votes. Uh, Arizona could be a good one. Uh, Ohio, again, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, maybe even Pennsylvania. Uh, Florida would be a good one. Uh, conservative Democrat as uh, North Carolina, even though. Uh, uh, they're 49% Republican and 46% Democrat. Um, that could be a good state to do that in. Maybe Nevada, Texas could be a good one. Um, I've, I've actually won uh, as a Democrat in the state of Texas. I won in a landslide as a conservative Democrat. So that was a really interesting scenario whenever I played as that. Uh, let's do some economic growth in these states. Get that Republican support and taxes. Um, 15,000 people. Maybe we could actually win the state of Nevada in this game. Um, campaign. We got 30 hours left. Let's go to Wisconsin. Have not campaigned at all in the state of Wisconsin, unfortunately. Uh, 744. Let's do a full day of rallying. Let's go ahead and continue uh, wisconsin is a must win wisconsin is the state that gave me the win in the previous election so uh, we need to hold on to the state of wisconsin if we want to hold on to the presidency let's go ahead and do a voter voter poll uh wow ouch look at that we are losing by an extraordinary amount and it's because of the independence. We don't have enough Republic, uh, Democrat support. We're about to lose this presidential race by about more than 10 points. If we lose this presidential race by 13, this is 13 points. This is a 13 point difference. That is a huge difference. We need to narrow that by the time the election comes around. Uh, we need to we need to start getting some money into attack ads as well. Let's do this across the spectrum. Let's do this all across the states. I think it's also because we don't have a lot of Republican support. We're going to be helping out in some of those down ballot races. Regarding free community college. Voter intention, 
41 to wow that lead is increasing it's probably going to narrow by the time the election comes around let's do a hundred million dollars nationwide into because we really need to get a lot of good democratic support if we can just half it with if we can half it with uh with the which one let's look okay look if we can actually half that wait what hang on okay hang on let me never mind never mind them just passing all of those campaign uh we need to go somewhere else to campaign we're actually really liked in uh michigan wisconsin and pennsylvania okay let's do here conduct a poll voter intention montgomery hubbard looks like montgomery does have a real shot at winning the state of wisconsin we're gonna go for about seventeen thousand nineteen we're gonna go for about at least twenty thousand democrats always do better in a national poll that well the thing is is that in the national poll i um in the national poll in the previous election i was leading in the national poll like i was i was ahead by about a point the fact that it goes from a point to literally 15 points i mean that's a huge difference the benjamin pickles win his senate primary let's actually check that thank you for reminding me about that uh state senator governor of texas next election view all play politician elections uh, does not look like he uh, entered into the Texas Senate race, unfortunately, so he's probably going to have to wait another two years for that. Uh, opponents, let's check. Using government resources the best way. Continued funding. Yeah, he's like totally, totally, completely liberal. He even supports Medicaid expansion, which I think we got rid of that. Uh, energy policy, immigration policy. Danes County? I've never heard of that one. We're in week 34. Poverty nationwide. Let's do hundred and fifty million dollars nationwide on social security support finance let's go ahead and yeah definitely we need to open up some more campaign offices so I think I'm gonna do about let's do about another ten million dollars worth of campaign offices nationwide I mean it's gonna be completely all across the board nationwide 10 million we're gonna do 10 million dollars 90 field offices nationwide awesome and then let's go to volunteers let's do zero door knocking well let's do 10 percent door knocking and 20 percent to fundraising and then max out phone banking and actually get rid of the yard signs. All right, let's see what that public reaction is. Do that. What is your stance on the election fraud claim by Trump? Do you believe it or not? I waited for them to to, to show up with some with some um uh, um proof and that proof really has not come about so i'm i'm not going to take a stance on it it's he i i think it's because he just doesn't want to lose and i know a lot of people don't like it whenever he says that and <sighs> because he's even saying it now he's he's saying it where he's like i mean i'm not going to lock down but 
time will only tell what the next administration is going to do. So I think that's his concession. I mean, I think he's finally come to an acceptance that he has lost this election. And I came to that acceptance about the day after the election. I, I, I was pretty surprised. I was like, I mean, how, how could, how could Biden win this? How, how, what, what kind of, what kind of person do you have to be to vote for Biden? But that's what people wanted. And I understand that they made that choice because Trump pulled way too much attention to himself. Look at that. 6.2 billion views on the marketing. Um, he brought too much attention to himself. He, he just didn't resonate with that many voters. I mean, he resonated with over 70 million people and that's a voter base. And it the, the election was a lot closer than we really thought that it was going to be. I honestly thought that Biden was going to win by a landslide, but he didn't. So why why well why would he lose then is it fraud is it or is it because of the way he acts and i would rather take like a acting like trump is this like godlike figure that doesn't do anything wrong you obviously are not listening to what he's saying i under i understand that trump has a lot of things that he that he's done right that i i think that he's done a pretty decent job but it's his mouth it's his mouth he's he just never shut up and a lot of people and to a point it did kind of sow a little bit more violence because it wasn't against it wasn't it was more more for people who didn't like um it was the violence basically was just getting to a point to where a lot of people it was specifically because of trump and you know you could say well i mean blah 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 and i understand that but i don't know it's it's a hard scenario and i think trump somewhat did this to himself because he didn't shut up it, it he wasn't pulling any attention to the policies that he was making he was pulling too much attention to kicking and screaming and then making such a big scene to where he was just like blah 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 and but that's the way he campaigns and you can't really change that so that's the acceptance that i came to with him is that you can't really change him and if he loses this election it's his fault and i honestly feel like it's trump's fault that he lost this, this election uh participate in the presidential debates um Express your intention to work with both parties to draft bipartisan legislation, bring forth an atmosphere of compromise and respect to the world of politics. Uh, lost that Republican support, but got a lot of that independent support. That, that's great. I'll work tirelessly to represent your interests. He is a progressive Democrat. We may lose this election to this man, um, unfortunately. We're... Yeah, look at that. Uh, Democrats, yeah, yeah. Voter enthusiasm is not at its greatest in any of the battleground states. Look at that. Uh, Democrats are leading in the state of New North Carolina. They're leading in Florida. They're uh, even leading in Texas. What about California? Um, let's do some polling. Wow, 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 look at Texas. Look at Texas, man. Texas is... Ouch, how do I screw this up? Ouch, uh, what about Florida? I, I'm pretty sure that I'm about to lose Florida. Uh, yep, Hubbard is ahead by about 10 points. As a Republican, travel to the state. We we gotta hit. We gotta hit like a lot of things on the mark. <clears throat> we got finances. Still going into week forty with all that. Um. Yeah. Remember what AP said on the last. I remember what AP said on the last live stream. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Oh man, this sucks. Presidential debates. How you improve the country. Uh, let's do that independent vote again. Well, I think I just screwed that up because I'm still losing among the Republicans and the Republicans aren't going to turn out. So I'm going to lose this election. I, I, I'm i coming to an acceptance that I'm going to lose this election. Let's do $200 million into minimum wage. We need some Republican, literally like some last minute Republican turnout thing to turn out the base that I have. 60% among the Republicans. Um, okay. Effect on public opinion. What about nationally? What's it, what's it looking like nationally? Texas. What about what about Ohio? Maybe if I can hold on to Ohio, that might show something. Nope. <laughs> yeah, we're losing in Ohio by about another fifteen points. Oh my god, this is gonna suck. PG is conceding four weeks before the election. <laughs> You might want to stop running national ads, okay. Okay, so we're predicting Texas Blue in 2032. Hey, that rhymes! That rhymes! If PG pulls off, pulls off a 2016 Trump Trump moment. Um, what we really need to do is that I need to be throwing some crap at this guy, but he's, like, solid. He's, like, there's nothing wrong with him. I can't hit him on anything. Okay. No, if I do that, then I'll lose the Republican vote. School choice is not appropriate for our community. Uh, a wealth tax. He likes wealth taxes. He doesn't like flat taxes. See, he's like pristine clean. Like, I, I can't, I can't hit him. The problem is that TPP polls are accurate. Yeah, I know. He, they are. That sucks. Like, it sucks that I can't pull off the... Okay, let, let's try the income gap. Oh, hang on. Wait, let me hit the... Wait. Wait. Policy. Decrease. Maintain. Maintain. Wait. Poll data. National. Let's do... Let's do voter intention, policy support, voter enthusiasm, priorities, and then public opinion on economy, education, taxes, and poverty. So... <laughs> that's a national poll. I'm about to lose this presidential election by 30 points. See, I guess the election is okay. I'm on. I'm still on normal. That's the thing. I'm losing by 30 points because I'm on normal. This is gonna be. This is gonna be like the worst. <laughs> oh God! I cannot wait to see these results. I cannot wait to see these results. These are this this is embarrassing. Policy support. My approval rating has been trending downward and I guess he has stronger policy support. So that's where that's where my issue is. But even Republicans. Okay, so it's literally because Republicans don't like me. Half of Republicans, look at that. Half of Republicans do not like me. 28% of Republicans are voting for the most liberal candidate over a moderate. Let me look. Policy. 46. He has a 46% approval rating among among, Repu among Republicans. Voter enthusiasm. Just barely below him. And then priorities as healthcare, social security, and taxes. 
So let's do it. Healthcare. Increase Medicare access. I'll go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Healthcare, Social Security, and taxes. Let's reduce the income tax, I guess. This is going to be my election promise. Uh, let's do the national polling. Oh, we are on the last week, boy. We are on the last week. More like Jimmy Carter. This is my Jimmy Carter accent. I, I lost the election against Reagan because I, because I didn't know what else to do. I, I had the Iran Contra. I had, I had this. I had that. And my name, the name's Jimmy. And I approve the message. I, I don't know what that Jimmy Carter accent was. Oh man. All right, let's do Duval County, and then let's do Sunday News. Nope, we're, well, I guess we're out. All right, any any ideas of what I should do in this last week, guys? Like, is there any idea? It, like, just give me, just give me, a, just give me, a, give me something. Give me something here. Wow, look at that. We narrowed it. 45 to 54. Look at that. Hmm, okay, so we're seriously- we're getting something here. We're getting something. I'm no longer behind 30 points. <laughs> is this a, is this the last minute surge? This is the last minute surge. Um, poverty, social security, let's dump a hundred million dollars into social security. Uh... Ruin the economy so you can fix it and fix it in 2036. <laughs> yeah, I'll run for I'll, I'll run for re-election. We'll basically Donald Trump this. Oh uh, God, we got one week. What is this? Uh, can I flip flop on a couple of things? Can I flip flop? Let's okay. Let's support background checks. Uh, let's go ahead and support free community college. And I guess that might throw me over. Let's... Let's... Can I... Remaining funds? Wait, okay, so... Okay. Voter intention in Ohio. I'm ahead in Ohio! Wait, is that... Wait, that's Alabama. God dang it. <laughs> Uh, Colorado, let's check you. Uh, sh very narrow race in Colorado. Uh, Florida, what about you? We're ahead in Florida. I think we might pull this off? Can we get an electoral college win without- Oh my god, we might- we might win the electoral college, but then lose- lose the popular vote. Uh... Okay, this is Iowa. I am losing Iowa, actually. What about Michigan? What's going on in Michigan? I haven't really been paying attention to it. Yep, we're going to lose Michigan. I kind of figured that. Uh, Missouri. What are we doing there? What are we doing? We're winning in Missouri. New Hampshire. Can, the, can this be a bellwether for the Rust Bell? Nope. It's not going to be. What about Arizona? What's going on there? Crap. Uh, okay, we're winning in Arizona. Um, Texas. What are we doing? Sean Irwin. We uh, we're doing a little bit better in we're doing a little bit better in Texas. I mean, I mean, I mean, for our home state, that's pretty crap. Wisconsin is going to be critical. Very, 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 very. Look at that needle right there. Look at that. That is coming right down to the independence. We we need to do something in Wisconsin real quick that's going to, like, that's going to save us. Uh, I think Wisconsin is seriously going to be the state, again, to throw us over the top. Um, so we're going to go Florida... 
let's do Florida, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Well, okay, so I, I, that's helping us a little bit. It's helping us a little bit in Pennsylvania. Florida, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, or something. All right, let's go ahead and go to the results, see how this uh, presidential election ends. All right, and we can t Yep, we lost. <laughs> I saw Indiana go blue and I'm like, crap, crap, oh god. And we lost Alaska, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, God, that's even worse than 2008. Oh, kill me. Kill me. What is this? I'm sorry. What was that last minute? The polls were wrong. The freaking polls were wrong. All the polls were wrong. They were wrong in Florida. They were wrong in Alaska. <laughs> they were wrong in Arizona. How did we lose Arizona? We, we lost Indiana. I lost Indiana. In oh my god, I wanna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna I'm just gonna Oh man, this is worse. This is seriously worse than what McCain did in 2008. Like I mean I mean it's it's literally the same map except it's the same map except uh except the Democrat this time actually won Arizona and also flipped Alaska. But I, I mean it's literally a 2008. God dang, I guess. I mean, look at that popular vote margin. I lost by 10 million. So the initial polls, the initial polls were right. Ouch. This is a... Hubbard got more votes. Yeah! Oh god! Look at this! Hubbard got more votes than Joe Biden. <laughs> how many votes did, uh... How many votes did, uh... Did Joe Biden get in this election? Let's look. Um... 26, 2016, uh, 2020 elections, let's look, presidential, so, Joe Biden has gotten 80, or 78 million votes in this presidential election, uh, well, actually, well, this is Wikipedia talking, um, let's see what... And New York Times is so the full map is now is out now finally 306 electoral votes to 232 for Donald Trump um, Georgia was the close one here uh, but Joe Biden has gotten uh, 78.5 million votes out of this presidential election right now uh, and then Montgomery Hubbard in this one got 83 million votes so I got Donald Trump Basically, I mean, not really in the same electoral margins. I mean, I, I mean, I got actually, I'll call it Obama. I got Obama here. Uh, 378 electoral votes to, to 160 for President Irwin. Uh, 83.1 million votes to 69.3 million votes. Absolute electoral college landslide. For some reason, I held on to the state of Missouri, but I bet the exit polls over there were actually very close. Uh, Connecticut wasn't even thought of i actually forgot the campaign in connecticut florida shifted way to the left uh georgia how close were you 51 to 49 in the state of georgia hell yeah uh idaho illinois indiana what happened here what happened in the state of indiana uh i got 1.3 million republican votes they got 1.35 they got okay so they just wow Okay, so if Democrats, president-wise, if they can turn out that base in in the state of Indiana, just Democrats alone helps you carry the state. That's interesting. I get. I should probably run as a as a Democrat in Indiana. Uh, Iowa. What happened here? 
uh, Democrats turned out. So it was a turnout game in a lot of these states. What about Texas? How close was the was the exit polls in the state of Texas? Pennsylvania, barely even close. Uh, South Carolina, close. Uh, South Dakota was... Nope, not even. Uh, Texas, 53.7 to 46.3. So it was close, but not close enough. Uh, very much closer than the previous election. Virginia, barely. Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, wow, we actually did pretty well in the state of in uh, Washington, D.C. Got 14% of the vote. I don't know what I did in the last one, but... Uh, West Virginia. West Virginia flipped blue! Huh, I didn't see that. Oh, no wonder it looks so weird. Uh, yeah, I also lost... <laughs> I didn't even notice that the first time. I lost West Virginia. Wow. Wisconsin... 52, 53 to 47. Run again, this election was stolen. <laughs> Uh, become Grover Cleveland. I could. I could become Grover Cleveland. Uh, look at the Senate and the House. Yes, sir, I will. Uh, Democrats took the Senate. Yep. Oh, no wonder. No wonder. See, I freaking hate that. I freaking hate how these blue wave election years just hit you, just sideswipe you. Look at that. Democrats got a, a seat in, in the West Virginia Senate. Like, that's the thing about this freaking game, is these elections, sometimes they don't notify you, and the polls become wrong, because it's just a turnout game by that point. The, the Democrats end up turning out so many people that that they just, they just swamp. I mean, they take places like, like Maine, Michigan, West Virginia even. Uh, North Carolina. They took Alaska in the Senate. There's a Democratic senator from Alaska. And they're going to stay there for six years. Uh, the House of Representatives. Let's check to see what happened there. Democrats Democrats only gained a seat. Hmm. Democrats gained 11 seats. They flipped 11 seats. Republicans gained 10 in this election. They gained 10 seats. So the net gain for the Democrats was just the single seat that they got. Uh, they flipped at the Democrats, uh, though, they, they they performed extremely well in the state of Alaska. In the state of Alaska, they flipped the at-large district, uh, so they are represented for, for a Democrat. They have a Democratic senator uh, in the, in coming out of there. Uh, and then... California District 45, though, flipped for the Republicans, so that's good. Do a John Quincy Adams and enter Congress. See, I was thinking about that. I was just like, hey, since I lost the presidency, I could just go right back to Congress. And I know there's several presidents that, that have done that before. Um, so I literally could just go back to the Senate if I really wanted to. Uh, following staff members have retired. Chief of Staff and Marketing Strategist. All right, let's go ahead and pardon that Thanksgiving turkey, and let's go to the next year, and will be the end of my presidential term. All right, guys, if you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys want to see more content like this, just hit that bell notification icon, and uh, don't miss any content like this. Uh, thank you all for the 350 people that have watched this uh, uh, entirely. Uh, I guess, but uh, thank you all for joining in on this live stream. Uh, next time we are going to be running for another office. I think I'm going to go ahead and maybe run for the house. If I run for the house of representatives, I could easily become the speaker of the house. Uh, if I go back to the Senate, then I could actually uh, become the Senate majority leader. So which one should I go to? Should I go to the house or should I go to the Senate? Which one should I lead? Uh, because I could, uh, since I did not become uh president for a second term i could absolutely go back to congress so uh we would definitely have a lot of control there i would uh, be the ranking member in every way shape and form 
Uh, looks like a lot of people do want me to go back to the Senate, uh, so I could uh, go back to the Senate. Anyway, guys, uh, go ahead and join the Discord. Um, server, serve with Benjamin Pickles. Actually, I could. Hell yeah, I could actually do that. I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, run for Senate again, and I'll be serving alongside my, alongside my own protege. So again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Go ahead and join the Discord if you haven't below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.